you don't understand, it's shortcuts. Um, uh, it is. It is the. It was the thing. It would be the kind of movie that would be impenetrable for someone in high school, and it made no sense to me. Um, oh. So I, I said, "Hey, can I write some reviews?" And they said, "No, not unless you join the paper." And I said, "Okay, then I'll just write things on my own." So I started writing reviews on my own and putting them on top of the newspaper wherever got them, where, where people would pick them up. And the newspaper got very angry because mine were on top of theirs. And so um, <laughs> they were taking my reviews more than they were taking the school paper, even though mine was just on regular paper that I printed out that day. And uh, so they made me join the school paper and then kept trying to get me to not write reviews um, and then do other things. And I just had literally no interest. And I eventually got in my senior year, got fired by the school paper for not wanting to write anything else. That's hilarious. Uh, Does any, has anyone mentioned that you actually look a lot like Jay Sherman? Um, I don't look like Jay Sherman, but from this angle, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Just the angle. Um, the uh, the critic, Gord, know. if you don't remember. Yeah, uh, no, I know who Jay Sherman is. Uh, he referenced on uh, uh, what was it, Family Guy? I think where I know him from. Oh, probably. Memory serves me. You should watch it. The the the, the TV show, The Critic, totally holds up. Still very fun. Amazing. Yeah, it does. Um, so yeah. what was um, what was. What, What's one big influence from that era that really stood out for you and made you want to pursue the this? same influence in the '90s, and it was Pulp Fiction. Um, that was one oh, of the first. Of one of the first sort of like major papers I wrote was about the violence in Pulp Fiction. But um, you know, and then I went to I made a movie in high school, and and then went to film school in Boston, and then realized that I you know I made movies but didn't really want to do it. I didn't I didn't like the process so much. I didn't like how exhausting editing was and I didn't yeah. like having to walk on eggshells with actors. So, um, when I graduated, I just went back to New York and got a regular job and <laughs> didn't, you know, eventually would get magazine work and, and, uh, newspaper work when someone would read something I wrote on a forum and hire me to do it, to write reviews for them. But it was sporadic and it didn't pay very well. Yeah. And then eventually I started, um, writing for a newspaper in Columbus, Ohio. When I moved there, and then regularly doing it again and then doing interviews and writing articles and then starting my own website when I moved to Philadelphia, um, doing podcasts starting in like 2009 to 2012. Wow. Um, I was in a commercial that never aired. Um, uh, they drove us across the country because I was voted one of the top 20 critics in America at the time. Wow. And, Holy shit. Uh, they shot a commercial that was uh, very bad uh, and they never <laughs> aired it was supposed to run before um uh like when when uh during the commercials before the movies uh it was a complicated okay. um and they never aired mine and i was fine with it um <laughs> it flew out to denver to do it it's a very odd story that i will not tell for legal reasons we'll just say because <laughs> i have my theories about I... what was going on, and it's it's insidious, and it doesn't matter now because none of the companies exist except one of the players uh, does still exist in a way, and he's um, – uh, uh, I, would, I would – if I told the story, it would sound like money laundering because it was. Um, Fair enough. Did you see Face Off? Awesome. You did. Yes. <laughs> Dream, there's Mother, Crossing Delancey, Kira Curse, there's Animal House. Seven. I'm looking at seven. seven. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that's the criterion of seven. Um, I was a huge fan of seven. All right. Do I need to find prove you that I own Rumble in the Bronx on Laserdisc, or do you believe me? No, I, I absolutely <laughs> believe you. <laughs> okay. I'll find it somewhere during this conversation, and then you'll go, oh, my God, you weren't making that up. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I, I totally believe you. That's really cool. I um not making that so, up. Can you see that? There it is. Were there you? it is. <laughs> All very cool. But if you get, uh, I think the original cut before they they dubbed it and brought it to the U.S. Um, I can't remember if it's called Rumble in Hong Kong or whatever it's called, but it's a longer version that's I think still in English. But but um, yeah, a couple of minutes longer. So maybe you're in that cut. It's possible. It was all in Vancouver. That's all I. Oh no! I it's was, not. Uh, that it was not shot in the Bronx. The mountains in the background are a big giveaway. Yeah. The, and the, the thing that baffled me was they spent like a week going through the streets where they were filming it, um, covering up all the graffiti with fake movie graffiti. <laughs> oh, because it was a Canadian-specific graffiti? 
No, they just didn't. They thought they might be gang symbols or something, so they had to get uh, rid okay. of them. <laughs> I just that was when I learned that everything in movies is fake. Yeah, I mean, for instance, yeah. here's here's a lesson I tried to teach someone the other day. So there's an actress who's like, um, I uh, on a, this was in a Facebook forum. She said, um, "I'm getting back into acting, and I want to, um, I, I want to know if on my auditions." I have to cover up my tattoos. I've got them on my arms and blah, blah, blah. And she explained this whole thing. And all the actors were like, you be you. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. If they don't accept you for you, then it's not going to matter. So I chimed in and pointed out several problems. First, uh, your, your tattoos uh, are someone else's art. In other words, they have to be licensed. Um, That's true. Really? Yes. So you have to get a release from the tattoo artist in order to show them in a movie. And that's an additional pain in the ass that everyone wants to avoid. So that's why you cover it with makeup. Second, the problem is if you're not putting in the effort to con conceal your tattoos when you're auditioning, I can't really figure out what other problems you're going to create once you show up on set. So I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. probably going to be like, okay, this person's not worth it. Because most actors, there is no distinguishing one or the other. Yes, there are good actors and bad actors, but most that you'll see are all about the same level. And people who get famous, it's just luck. Yes, there's yeah. you know, showing up and skill, and there is talent, but it's mostly luck. Um, so um, it, I tried to explain. Is there, you know, a, um, uh, is, is there a, uh, um, sorry, I think I can't remember his name now. The producer who makes all the girls, Pink's producer, and is is there one of those for movies? Like kind of the Simon Cowell of motion pictures? Who? Well, I guess Weinstein, but not anymore. Yeah, was, um, was that? Yeah, he was that guy. I just I answered my own question there. Um, is it that way? Like, uh, how how do I, I want to say this? Is I know in the nineties, indie films were gigantic and got a lot of attention they got a lot of uh accolades are they not so much anymore or is it just more underground yeah, than it's 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 more that it's too easy to make a movie so the product isn't worth anything so right. what what happens is you anyone can pick up a camera you can shoot a whole movie on a phone uh, yeah, exactly. and i know you're like you can shoot a movie on a phone steven soderbergh has made two movies on a phone one of them you can see on netflix um the, the high flying bird which is not right. bad but you can see that was shot on a phone, like an iPhone. Or uh, what was the one about transsexuals? Tangerine. That was shot on an iPhone. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't know that. So, so um, is there just mountains of crap out there now? Yeah, there's no... The, 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 the notion that like things are better or worse, oh, they were better when I was younger, is always ridiculous, as you can imagine. Just like the music isn't any better, your taste just changed. Um, yeah. There's well, just as much... The percentage of bad stuff is just as high. But it's so difficult to break through because there's too much product and there are too many streaming services and it's too difficult to get anybody's attention. So I honestly don't pay any attention whatsoever. Is it as good as it always was? Like, is there a David Mamet right now? Is there a well um, in terms of a playwright? I mean, that's who he, you know. That's what David Mamet excelled at as being a playwright initially. Of course, but his movies are, in my opinion, some of the best ever made. Um, well, like State Satan Maine, I think, is one of the greatest movies. Spartan film. is a great movie, but I don't know, you know, if you don't know it, sitting, sitting right here, Spartan. <laughs> I actually don't know it. <laughs> That's a great movie. With him, it's Val Kilmer, one of his best roles. I'm a big Val Kilmer fan. Um, nice. Kiss Kiss uh, Bang yeah. Bang, I think, is one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm iffy on that one. I think, I think his role is uh, Shane Black's um, poor attempt at apologizing for all his homophobia in his 80s scripts. Fair um, enough. Uh, Lethal Weapon, Last Boy Scout, especially Monster Squad, which piles on the homophobia for no particular reason when it's a kid's movie. Um, <laughs> and so Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, while well, a charming movie, still has this character named Gay Perry, which is basically an excuse <laughs> so they call him, you know, Gay Perry, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just basically an excuse so they can make gay jokes and go, wait, I have the shield of... Of this is a gay character, and we're okay with a gay character, but I'm still making all the same gay jokes. Is it more sophisticated than, say, when the Boondock Saints does it? Yes, but <laughs> that's not an excuse. That's something <laughs> we just had a we just had a big um, LGBT uh, rap guy on on the show, 
And that's something that's bugged me for years, and I can't believe it still goes on, where the gay guy has to be funny. That's right. In in sitcoms, in movies, uh, the only way you, you have to either be ridiculously tragic or really, really funny. You can't just be a gay character. In my film, I've got five gay gay characters, uh, none of whom have to be funny. They're just people. Um, That's fantastic. So when, when there was a streaming service that uh, offered me a deal, and they said, and I, uh, it was a game to LGBT audiences, and they said they'd seen the movie supposedly, and they said, okay, can you describe to us what the what the gay storyline is? Well, there isn't a gay storyline. <laughs> They're just gay characters in the movie, and so I. I vomited it out about 850 words, and I said, you probably won't use any of this. Um, but here, <laughs> here are the gay characters, and here are what they do, and like they're just living their life, and this person is like this, and this person is this, this. You know? So it was, uh, I mean, even the two villains are gay characters. They're just not out. They're, you know, I told the actors, hey, you're based on what if Roy Cohn and Joseph McCarthy were in a relationship. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> Genius. And Jason, okay, and I said, imagine every scene that you have in the movie is a sex scene between the two of you, except you're never going to kiss. And all the jokes that you're doing about bananas, which they do, and every little gesture is basically a sex scene or innuendo or something. And they're like, got it. And they went with it. And so the, the scenes That's are very awesome. funny. Um, uh, they're much darker than they used to be before we actually had a viral pandemic. Um, so when they start talking about quarantines and high death counts and how proud they are of that and how they're going to hide the high death <laughs> count from the public. This scene plays a little differently than it did say, I don't know, five months ago when it was just pretty no dark. No kidding. That's, uh, um, that's amazing to me that it, that you, did you hesitate to put it out or were you because of the scamdemic or are you, uh, were, were, did it excite you to how, how did you react to it? No, it was a coincidence that I finished it the same week that I had was quarantined. <laughs> uh, that is um, very funny <laughs> but yeah i mean did did i have hesitation a little bit but but um it was like you know the guy who plays the the villain's henchman he said to me oh my god this is your movie what's going on right now and he's right um <laughs> but you still have to wait for it to be put out i mean you have all these options but it's all these, these as i said like the series of no options where you're not going to make any money and no one is necessarily going to see it. It doesn't really matter how much energy I put. I could, I could appear on every podcast in the world. Getting someone else's attention is the hard part. Getting someone to That's care or, or, or notice it for more than a, a handful of minutes is, is in, nearly impossible. I mean, you, again, your audience may not know this, but when you watch a movie on Amazon Prime, if I, if I have a distributor or I put it up myself, the, the rate is the same. It's one cent an hour. So you watch wow. my hour. 42 minute movie, I will get less than two cents. Wow. Um, a guy I had I, a story published by Amazon. I had a short story published by Amazon last year, but it's strictly for Kindle. And I don't okay. think I actually get paid or anything from it. But Oh, well, I'm sure there's, there's like a transactional rate that you might get. Probably. And it would be, uh, again, the Spotify money, basically. Which Perhaps. I think is 0. 0.003 of a cent. Or something like that. <laughs> the transactional money, if you if you rent a movie on Amazon, is better. It's still 50-50. The best split is Vimeo, but nobody uses it. I think that splits something like 85-15 in the filmmaker's favor, which we would all love to use. But since nobody goes there, nobody accidentally runs a, uh, you know, like on YouTube, uh, you know, you, you'll see clips on the side. Nobody accidentally, that never accidentally happens on Vimeo. No one browses it just to do it. I would like to actually because I use Magisto for a lot. I make a lot of little like one or two minute movies, mm -hmm. and uh, they automatically go get put on Vimeo. But I never check them out there. I've never. I don't even know what it is to be honest. You've you've now proven the point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we would love to be you know Vimeo to be a viable platform, but it's not. And I've probably got a dozen videos on there right now that I don't. <laughs> I don't track. I don't know what they do. Right. Um, and, and how, funny, I know nothing about any of the industry, but even I've heard of Vimeo. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually heard of them. <laughs> Never seen well, anything on it, but I've heard of them. <laughs> one of those. It's like TikTok. You, you yeah. hear about it, but nobody knows what it is. <laughs> I know it exists. <laughs> is the, how's the, what's the state of the indie movie theater? Does that still exist? It exists. I mean, look, right now, 
I don't know if we're going to get anyone going to an indie movie theater for another year and a half. Because who wants to sit in a small room sharing the air just to see some movie that'll be on demand within two months? 